I'm a bit of a lucky boy, because this is a piece of Nikko gear, and that's very rare around here. It's not mine though, I'm merely servicing it, but it's fun to see it. Out of all the Japanese uh, gear, it's by far the most uncommon. Uh, even Luxmen are more common than Nikko around here. And I must say, this is a very nice unit. The feel of it is just perfect. Nothing wrong with the build quality. However, all this stuff around here belongs to the power amplifier, the Nikko Alpha 2, I believe. The preamp was a Beta 2. There we go, Alpha 2. And this is one sick puppy. It's a very nice design. A very, very service friendly. Dual. The channels seem to be entirely individual in every way. Two transformers, two rectifiers, two everything save for the power, the power regulation and voltage regulation board or, and the protection board. And even throughout these, there's hardly anything shared between the channels, which is very nice. They also got gone to the effort of making both amplifier boards identical, which is very good for me because this is a 220 volt unit which has been run on 230 volts sometimes in the 80s I believe we went from 220 to 230 here in Europe and uh, it suffered a few casualties because of that the voltage across the caps is going to be about 62 volts and these are 63 volts rated caps sadly I I wasn't the one who sourced the, these caps the customer brought them in these are 63 volt caps, even though they should be 80 volt rated. But I'm going to have to see if I can change the voltage to 240 on it. And I just thought I'd do a quick video on it. I believe the, the capacitors cost, they leaked and caused a massive failure of the regulation board, which is underneath the caps. So I had to get the Dremel out and just remove a whole heap of bad material that was conducting. I also recapped it. But that board should be good to go. But uh, sadly, uh, the customer didn't react before everything went bad and it blew out all the power transistors. Now, I have actually had it uh, hooked up to my power supply and tested the power amplifiers uh, w with the transistors removed. And amazingly, the left channel seems to be in good working order because if you just uh, hook a scope up to the output off of a board with no power transistors installed, you get a very clean signal through it. However, the right channel is just to bang on into the negative rail and this one seems to have suffered a fair few casualties. I've ripped out four transistors and a diode was fine. There are more broken parts to go around. It's very, very, very easy to troubleshoot and I've just got a reference right there. But, yeah, it's a bit of a project and sadly I'm doing it on the cheap so I can't do it rather perfectly, but I think I'm going to recap these boards anyway, just because I'm a nice guy and I like the gear. I'm going to have to replace these uh, VDS-1212 diodes on both boards. This one's reading bad and they are apparently notorious for failing and causing general mayhem. So I'm going to have to rip this board A2, even though the VD-1212 seems to actually be working hard on it. But yeah, I've got to keep working and we'll see if we can get any life out of this unit. Right yo, I've replaced all the stuff that I think needs to be replaced in this thing including this little transistor there, probably a temperature sensor uh, and a uh, rather considerable bag of thingies of the actual PCB. Basically uh, the entire power stage was blown and also I had to replace all the electrolytic caps since this uh, this horrible burny uh, glue that goes conductive over time, so I just did, did them all once I was there. It's for the best of a customer, it would fail fairly shortly afterwards anyway if I didn't do it. And I think we're getting ready to try and bench test this thing. I've replaced so many parts in it that I'm fairly confident it will actually work since there isn't a whole lot left to actually be broken. And uh, it seems to measure identically to the known good channel which would put through a signal so fingers crossed I'm gonna flip this on its 
on its back and uh, hook up my power supply. Alright, so I've got this cape hooked up right to the 8 foot off of the uh, channel that's going inside the amp there. And uh, this is where the TTI EX752M power supply really comes into its own since we've got two voltage and current limited rails to go from. So I've got those hooked up to the uh, this uh, secondary of the transformer for this channel is a two transformer amplifier, obviously. So it'll be just like plugging this thing into a Variac. Let's go. And we certainly do have something. A lot better than it <laughs> than the last time where it would just slam into a rail and do absolutely nothing. Well, we've actually got exactly what we would expect. It's got a bit of distortion, but that's okay. And we don't really seem to be having any DC offset either. Let's turn the voltage up a bit and see if we can get it to actually put out a clean signal. That's a 20, plus minus 20 volts right now, and this is looking perfect. Absolutely perfect. So this thing's supposed to run some, somewhere around plus minus 60. Let's just slowly crank it up. I've got a 100 milliamp current limit on both rails, so if something goes horribly wrong, it shouldn't be too catastrophic. Plus minus 30 now. I'm pretty confident turning this up to plus minus 55 or so. Alright, so if we pay to apply to plus minus 55 there. All right, about to turn it on. Fingers crossed. This first going to be smoke. It's going to be coming now. We should see a slow ramp up of the voltage due to the current limit. It's very symmetrical, very nice. This is exactly what I would want to see. At this stage, I'm basically confident in calling this a fix because we're still getting perfect output. And if I turn it up a bit, it should, yeah, it's rising. It seems to be clean up to something like that, plus minus 20 volts. Almost no DC offset. The scope should be, no DC couple, I don't know if I said the DC the last time. But yeah, still no DC offset and if we had some DC offset we wouldn't be getting this high signal out of it, it would be just uh, clipping on one side and even though it's clipping asymmetrically that's just nothing to worry about since, it's, since it isn't slamming into a rail and let's just verify that the other channel is still working as well because I haven't broken it turning it on, and it looks absolutely perfect as well in fact it seems to be entirely identical with entirely identical power supply and input settings, so I'm very happy with that. So now I'm going to have to keep it hands on again and uh, recap this uh, secondary amplifier board, or rather the left channel amplifier board, get rid of all that uh, horrible gunk they put on there. You can see on the big 220 microfarad cap there, that stuff goes conductive, and that might be part of a cause that caused this amplifier to fail in the first place so I've got to remedy that. Yuck. Yeah it was definitely not a bad call to get rid of all these caps. This one's from the functioning amplifier board and you can see it's absolutely moist on the underside. This thing's slowly been spewing out its contents underneath it. Most of this actually measure fine still there, but yeah, they're not long for this life. We're going to give them more than maybe another couple of years, if we're lucky. But, we're rid of that issue now. Hmm, well, I just found another likely culprit for the failure of this amplifier. As you can see, someone uh, who's a bit of a clown has been working on this thing in the past, and they've just cut these two amplifier ground wires. They're lying on the chassis ground instead, which does work, but uh, those wires are there for a reason. And look here, well, we've got a ground coming from the amplifier board, just sitting jammed in between 
will leave this with a positive supply rail and the output of the uh, right channel of the amplifier. Hmm. Yeah. They probably soldered that one back there, but they uh, just didn't do a proper job of it. And this can't lose for time. Huh. Okay, figure. Get to replace those wires because, yeah, this one's just budged beyond repair. And there we go. Two renovated amplifier boards. I haven't touched any of the semiconductors on this one except for this uh, dual diode there, which has been turned into two forty one forty eight. Uh, I've just recapped it and cleaned it up a bit, and of course I'm going to replace the power transistors. But beyond that, uh, this board should be good to go with the original transistors, and none of them are particularly known for failing. So. I don't think there's much point in actually replacing them, although this one has received new pair, new driver transistors there, there, and this differential pair there and there have been replaced. This was a 2SA733, this was a 2SC945, they've been turned into uh, KSA1845s and KSC nine nine two, whichever is in which place, I don't remember. Uh, and it should really just be a matter of putting this thing back together now, and hoping that it'll actually work with the pair of transistors in. Although I'm about ninety percent confident that it will. I also fixed the circuit away with this uh, short cable. Actually, just deloomed it there, and we'll call it good. Uh, I'm a bit concerned, however, because I think I'm going to have to somehow turn this unit into a 240 volt unit because the voltage over these uh, for 63 volt 10 phase in microfarad caps is about 62 volts nominally. It's not very good. These caps should have been 80 volt rated, but the guy got the parts, uh, got the 63 volt versions because that's what the old ones that were. Obviously rather limited success but we'll see, with a bit of luck I'll be able to make this into a 240 volt unit and uh, it'll be all fine and dandy anyway, we've just got to put it back together, get some power transistors in there and we'll have to give it a spin perhaps even hook it up to the distortion meter in order to see if it actually performs as new ok, I've got the uh, 8 per transistors installed, so I'm a proper on semiconductor MJ 15022 and 15023s, they are real beasts. Probably my favourite drop ins for basically all OTO3 transistors. They're indestructible. So, everything hooked up. Let's see if this thing is going to fire up or give up and fire. Uh, the bias is probably going to be bonkers, so I won't be surprised if it's not going to fire up on 100 milliamps, but we'll give it a go. Okay, we've got signal, and we're getting severely unbalanced rails, but uh, no horrible DC offset, and we are getting a signal through. So I'm feeling fairly comfortable upping the current just a smidge into 200 milliamps or so, because I have no reason to assume that this is going to fail since we are getting a clean signal through. Okay. We're up at operating voltage, I do believe. Yes, sir. E. 58 volts peak to peak coming out of it. This thing's got a major voltage swing. Very nice. The left channel not exploded. And if we turn off the power, let's see, just pull down the current limit, and the rails are just very slowly drooping down. You know, one, <laughs> we'd have one drops off before the other. Weird design. But yeah, this, I mean, since it's dropping this slowly, we can be fairly certain that uh, 
there's no, no excess current draw anywhere. I mean, we're sitting at 50 milliamps idling current at operating voltage here. This is excellent. And here comes the right channel. Slightly high idling current, but it's come up like a charm. I'm going to have to set my probe to 10 times. I'm going through the service manual for this thing. It can indeed be set to 240 volt operation by just connecting this red wire to the fuse rather than the orange one. But for some reason, we've cut it just a bit too short. So I'm going to have to extend that one. Weirdly, they haven't done it up here where it's more than long enough to reach. But at least it can be done, although <laughs> I think we could have been. <laughs> could have included a switch. Okay, so what have you got to uh, hooked up now is uh, the power supply to both channels is hooked up and as well as the input signals. And I've reinserted the fuses uh, for the uh, protect and power regulation boards. So they should fire up when I flick the power switch and I've put the cord into the wall. Uh, I tried this before with just the fuses in place and the, those boards seem to be okay although there's some bodgery on the protect board so who knows it might be a bit wonky. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just turn on the power on the power supply and then turn on the power on the main switch and what we're looking for is a relay click or smoke, whichever comes first. So, fingers crossed. And we do have a click. We do have a relay click. So that means we should be having some output on the actual speaker plugs. And indeed we do. And we barely even have any gain error between the channels. So I think it might be time to actually hook some speakers to up to this thing and crank the current limit on the power supply up to the entire 2 amps per rail this can handle. Let's see if this baby can sing. The official Logitech test speakers have been deployed. So, let's see if she sings. What would you listen to that? I think we've got a victory. Music never sounds as good as when we've just fixed an amplifier, I can tell you. I've probably put about 30 hours into this thing thus far. Oh, okay, maybe not 30, but at least 20. Fantastic. I've just got to let this thing play for a while, let it warm up, and then I've got to adjust the bias and put the damn thing back together. Return to a happy customer. We damn well got an engine rebuild for the price <laughs> of an oil chain. Alright, it's time to pair this thing up on its own power for the first time. I have gone a bit ahead of myself since I would have wanted to actually measure the supply voltage over the main caps before putting it back together. But I got halfway through attaching the bottom plate before remembering to do that. Anyway, this is a big moment. I'm about 95% certain it's not going to blow up, but failure is always an option. But here we go. Well, I do believe it would be running. Yes, indeed, we've got an idling pair consumption of 33 watts. And this thing seems to have a very good noise floor. Have I even turned the speakers on? This is mighty impressive. This is mighty impressive. I mean, if I shove the camera right there, you cannot hear anything aside from the image stabilization. Wow. This might actually be the quietest amp I've ever, ever repaired. If I shove a speaker right up to my ear, I can hear a very, very, very faint mains hum from one of the channels. Let's see, I can hear it from the one that uh, has the original transistors. 
So the one with the uh, 2SA 733 and the uh, 2SC945 pair has a very slight main sum. The one with the KSA9992 and the uh, KSC 1845 is de dead quiet. Dead quiet. I am not lying when I when I say I cannot hear anything coming out of that speaker. Now that could mean that the amplifiers failed, of course, but I think that's unlikely. So let's hook some signal up to this thing and verify that <laughs> it indeed has not failed. That would be embarrassing. No, because if I remove my input shorting plugs, I can get a lot of noise to come out of it. Jeez, that was loud. I think got fairly high gain. But yeah, indeed, both channels are working. So, only one thing left to do, do a performance report on it and give it back to the customer. And uh, after hooking it up to the distortion meter, we can definitely verify that we have uh, indeed got an incredibly low noise uh, low noise amplifier going here. Uh, what you're looking at now is uh, the uh, idle noise floor with inputs shorted of the amplifier after warming up. And we're looking at about uh, minus 78 decibel volts of uh, noise in the amplifier just sitting or about 120 microvolts. And that is just uh, a very good performance. Uh, it doesn't come close to the best amplifier I've ever tested, which uh, was at uh, 39 microvolts uh, with the volume control at the bottom. However, that amplifier was at 220 microvolts with the volume set to uh, full scale, which is basically what this one is, uh, since it doesn't have a volume control. So, in a way, this is uh, worth about 100 microvolts of margin. The single quietest amplifier I've ever measured and indeed if we go to the better channel the one that I replaced the transistors in uh, we will find that it's got a noise uh, that's closer to uh, 100 microvolts drifting right towards 90 microvolts so this is just absolutely insane noise performance I, uh, whoever owns this amplifier is a very lucky person indeed and this can also be very clearly seen in the uh, THD and noise performance. Uh, as this is at one watt output power, and we're looking at uh, just around minus 82 decibels uh, of uh, THD total harmonic distortion and noise, which is just an excellent figure. So let's step up the power level a bit and see if it uh, explodes. We've got uh, the meter on 30 volts full scale, so. Scale, so let's see if we can get 50 watts out of this thing. That should be 20 volts. There we go, spot on 20 volts. The meters on the amplifier are spot on, by the way. Let's see our distortion factor. Uh, it's a bit noise here. There we go, just over 0.04% distortion at 50 watts on one channel, and way less on the other. What's that? About 0.03. Very good performance, nonetheless. And the uh, power specification for this amplifier is uh, 130 watts uh, into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz with uh, no more than 0.03% total harmonic distortion. We don't get a THD plus N spec, so we can expect uh, a bit more than 0.03 and it's going to be okay, but we've got the meter set to 100 volts full scale. 130 watts should be f uh, just over 32 volts. So let's see if we can crank it that high without blowing anything. That will be just about 32 volts, and we've got. I think we're clipping slightly. Yeah, there we go. We are since we have this amplifier set to 240 volt operation, and we're operating it on 230. We are going to lose a small amount of headroom and we're just on the verge of clipping there. So what do we got? We've got to uh, point point double oh eight percent distortion at uh, thirty one volts which translates to about hundred and twenty watts. That's I would say well within spec considering it's a two forty volt model. So 
Moving on to the other channel, we've got a very slight gain error which we need to compensate for. But there we go, right on the verge of clipping there. And we've basically got the same performance. Yeah, just 0.01% there. Uh, 0 0.009, 0 0.008. Yeah, we are so close to clipping that it's irrelevant. There we go. 0 0.008 for both channels rolling at uh, 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms. Flawless. This amplifier is performing uh, beyond its new specification, and that's something I'm happy to return to a customer. So, thank you for watching, and I'm now just going to put the thing back together completely, screw the case on, transistor covers, and return this to a happy customer who got one hell of a deal. Cheerio!